This morning I woke up to an update to Lightroom Classic. That's the name Adobe is now calling the application. Those of you that have been around Lightroom for a while know that Adobe keeps changing the name of the program. Most recently it was called Lightroom Classic CC. Now they're calling it Lightroom Classic. At any rate, this new update is version 8.4 and I would characterize it as a minor update. It has the typical bug fixes and new camera and lens support. Uh, and it has a couple new features, but again, I would say that these are minor features and we're gonna be going over them in this video. First of all, they've supposedly improved performance in the library module. Now, I don't know about you, but my Lightroom, when I go from folder to folder in the library module or I jump to a collection, it's really laggy and slow. Supposedly, Adobe has improved this. Now, whether or not they actually did, I don't know. I haven't used it enough. Uh, but hopefully they have because I was mm, kind of annoyed by the performance of Lightroom in the library module. The other thing they've done is they added a new output image type. So if you go to the export module and you go down to file settings under image format, you'll notice now that you could out export to a PNG file that was never available until now, which I always thought it was kind of odd because PNG is a relatively popular image format. So you can now do that uh, in Lightroom. Um, the other thing they've done is they've added an index number down here in the film strip. And you can see right now I'm on image 9 and so on. There, So we have these index numbers. Supposedly, uh, when you're in grid view, a lot of people like this feature because you, when you're in grid view, your numbers are, or your images are numbered. You could see I have eight, nine, and that has always been there. Unfortunately, you never had the number down here in the film strip, the corresponding image. Now, I never really had an issue finding the corresponding image, but apparently some people have. So number nine, I'm on, and number nine is there. Uh, number 18 is this one over here. Number 18 is right there. So uh, that helps you better find the image. Now, if you don't like these numbers down there, you can turn it off. You need to go to Preferences. If you have a Mac, Preferences is under the Lightroom Classic menu. If you have a PC, it's under the Edit menu. So you go to Preferences, and you would go to Interface, and then right here, Show Index Number. Uncheck that box, and you'll see the numbers disappear. Check that box, and those numbers appear. So super easy to change that if you'd like to. The other uh, performance feature they've added is they added some new support, like hardware acceleration support. To turn that on, you need to get to, again, go to the preferences um, uh, dialog box. Uh, again, if you have a Mac, it's under Lightroom Classic menu. If you have a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And this time you would go over to the Performance tab. And you can see that at the very top, it has, I have Use Graphics Processor, and I have that off. I have that off because when I first bought this iMac, I found that Lightroom was continually locking up. And I found that if I turned that off, it never locked up. So I've had that off ever since. Now, if you want to take advantage of these new uh, hardware acceleration features, what you need to do is go to Custom. And then when you're in custom, check this box, use GPU for image processing. And it says process version five or higher. And I'll show you what that means in a moment. So you would check that box. So this is supposedly uh, going to give you better performance. And this is most notable if you're using a 4K monitor. Um, a computer is using a lot of resources to drive a 4K monitor. And apparently, I've never experienced it because I don't have a 4K monitor, but apparently, um, Lightroom became laggy uh, because of that. Well, supposedly, if you check here, uh, it will better optimize your GPU for your 4K monitor and for Lightroom. Now, whether or not it makes any difference for non-4K monitor users like me, no idea. But I'll leave it checked for a while, and I'll see, first of all, if my computer starts locking up again or Lightroom starts locking up again. And secondly, if I do see any uh, performance boost. So I'm going to leave that on. Now, as far as this process version five or higher, when you're in the develop module, if you're down here in the calibration tab, you'll notice where it says process. That's the process version. That's the process engine you're using. Um, version five is the current process engine. 
Uh, older versions of Lightroom used older versions. Now, any new imports or new images that you import into Lightroom will automatically go to process version 5. Any older imports you have in your Lightroom catalog will probably be in one of the older versions. If you want to take uh, advantage of those hardware acceleration performance enhancements, you'll have to manually come in here and change the process version for each of those images to version 5. So that's all that means. So just be aware of that. Uh, okay, next is they added color labels to catalog. So if we go down to catalog here, and let's say I just go to the top one, Animals of Forest Lawn, and I want to add a color label to that catalog, right-click right on that catalog, and then go down to Add Color Label to Collection, and then you could add red, yellow, green, blue, or purple. Let's say I just add red. So now you'll notice that that catalog in the very far right edge here has a red line on it. So that's just indicating that I gave that a red label, and maybe I, you know, I designate red as something important, like you know, images I really like or images I'm going to sell or something like that. And then you could actually kind of search for those. What you would do is you would go up here to the filter, and you can see this little magnifying glass right here. If you click on that, a little drop-down fly-out menu comes down, and you would go down to Labeled Collections. And now it will only show your labeled collections, and I only have one. And if you want to go back to the others, go to All. And now we have all our collections showing. Now one thing about um, labels in general, color labels, um, this isn't new to this version of Lightroom, but I thought I'd mention it. You could change it. If you don't want it to say red, you want it to say images I've sold or images I'm going to sell or, you know, you know, my favorite images or something. If you want it to say something else beside red, you could do that. And if I can remember how to do it, you go up to metadata and you would go down to color label set, then down to edit. Now you can see you have headings at the top, images, folders, and collections. So for images, if you give images a red label, let's say, and you want to change that, you could change that to like images I've sold. And then if you, as you could color label folders as well, you could do the same thing for folders and the same thing for collections. So you could change any of those labels from the default red, yellow, green, or blue. Then you could also create a preset for it if you prefer. Uh, so save current settings as a new preset. You could go back to your default presets and so on. I'm just going to cancel. But that isn't new to this version of Lightroom, but I thought I'd mention it because it kind of goes hand in hand with color labels. Now the final thing they've added uh, that maybe is a little bit more of a significant um, addition to Lightroom is they've added batch support for HDR merges and panorama merges. So you could do more than one. So in this example here, I have one bracketed set of images for a specific church. Oh, this is Our Lady of Basilica. Then I have another bracketed set of images for a different church. This is St. Anthony's Cathedral. If you want to batch process these as HDR, what you need to do is put them in a stack first, individual stacks, meaning this first church, Our Lady of Victory Basilica, select all of them, click on the first one, hold the shift key down, and click on the last one. So all five images are selected. Then right click on any of the images in the film strip, go to stacking, and then go to group into stack. Now those five images are stacked, and this little icon in the corner of the thumbnail is showing us that it's stacked. Next, we need to stack the other group of images. So click on the first one. This is St. Anthony's Cathedral. Hold the shift key down, click on the last one. Then again, again you would right-click, go to stacking, group into stack. Now we have the two stacks. Now what you need to do is just select both stacks. Click on one, Hold the shift key down, click on the other one, or hold the command or control key down to, you know, select the other one. Then right click on either of them. Then go to photo merge. And then in this case, it's an HDR. You could do this panoramas as well. And then it's going to do two photo merge. And you could see up here, it's doing the merges automatically. So that's the way you could batch process 
either HDR merges or panorama merges in Lightroom. And I think that's all the new features. Let me look at my notes real quick while that's doing that. Uh, we did the color labels and let's see, I think that's everything. But at any rate, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to Adobe's website. So you could um, take a look at all these uh, features. And um, also there'll be uh, links on that web page that I'll send you to. So you could look and see the new camera and new lens support um, in case you have a brand new lens or camera that hasn't in the past been supported by Lightroom. Hopefully in this version it is, and you could check that out. So. That's everything for this video, the updates in the latest version of Lightroom version 8.4. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.